this video, I'll demonstrate and explain the conveyor tracking feature of MotionWorks IEC. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. Conveyor tracking is designed to improve cycle times for pick and place applications because the belt does not have to stop. It works with all mechanisms and groups supported by the MPIEC series controllers. The conveyor can be controlled directly by a servo or can be externally driven with encoder feedback. This is all made possible with the function block MC Track Conveyor Belt. First, determine the conveyor belt origin and tracking zone. When the object appears, receive the initial object position vector and capture the recorded position of the belt. Once tracking is in sync, all PCS moves are referenced to the part coordinate system moving along with the object on the belt. Now let's look at this in more detail. To illustrate these concepts, I'm using two conveyor tracking systems from the training lab here at Yaskawa America headquarters. There's a three-axis Delta robot and the Moto Mini six-axis articulated arm. In the Delta robot training demo, you see the tray moving down the conveyor. The robot places four balls on the tray while the conveyor continues moving and picks them back off. The MPIEC controller uses Mechatronic 3 to command the three axes of the Delta robot. The MPIEC handles all the kinematics of the Delta robot. It also commands the servo-driven conveyor. The vision system is triggered at regular intervals and reports the position of the tray to the MPIEC controller over Ethernet IP. This demo has three speeds. Slow, with the conveyor moving at 10 millimeters per second. Medium moves the conveyor at 20 millimeters per second. And fast is 60 millimeters per second. Tracking means the speed can randomly change throughout the cycle, as you see here, or even stop completely. This is important since the conveyor could also be driven externally. If that were the case, an external encoder on the conveyor would be required for position feedback to the MPIEC controller through a local I.O. card. This machine demonstrates that it's possible to resume tracking, which happens every time a ball is picked or placed on the moving conveyor. The Moto Mini training demo picks a ball out of a tube and places it on a small tray, moving on the conveyor. There's a time delay to clearly show the tracking operation. At the end of the conveyor, the ball recycles back into the tube. The PROX sensor simply detects whether or not there is a ball in the tube. Here also, the MPIEC controller uses the Mechatrolink 3 network to command the servo-driven conveyor. The MPIEC interfaces with the YRC1000 Micro robot controller over Ethernet IP using the MSync protocol. The YRC1000 Micro robot controller handles all the kinematics of the robot arm. The robot pendant shows a visualization of the motion. The vision system is triggered at regular intervals and reports the position of the tray to the MPIEC controller over Ethernet IP. 
Let's look at the three conveyor speeds of this demo. Here's 50 millimeters per second. Now 100 millimeters per second. And the fastest is 190 millimeters per second. Here's what happens when the speed changes abruptly while tracking. An important distinction with this hardware is that the conveyor position is transmitted to the YRC1000 micro over Ethernet IP. A proprietary algorithm is used to overcome communication delays, and it's optimized for constant conveyor speed, which is by far the most common scenario. In this demo, the conveyor is servo-driven, but an external encoder could also be used on the conveyor with encoder position feedback wired also to the MPIEC through a local I.O. card, just like in the Delta robot. The complex part of conveyor tracking is already done for you, contained in the block MC Track Conveyor Belt. The programmer provides the correct input values to the block and uses the output status to control the move sequence. Let's touch briefly on the basic principles. The most basic principle is that conveyor tracking is simply a moving part coordinate system, or PCS. MC Track Conveyor Belt sets up a part coordinate system with an offset that continually updates in the positive x direction of the conveyor. Once the block reports in sync, you can command simple PCS moves to take place relative to the coordinate frame of the moving object. All the complex math happens internally. However, to get to this point, the block requires a few inputs that are typically fixed for a given application. The first is the conveyor belt origin. This is a reference point for the positive x direction of the conveyor, but it is also a reference point for every object that enters the system. The conveyor belt origin is a vector offset from the origin of the machine coordinate system. It is typically established by teaching three points on the conveyor in the same way that you would establish the offset for a part coordinate system. Other inputs to the block defined regions along the conveyor where tracking will be synchronized or in transition in or out of synchronization. When an object is detected, two positions must be captured. First is the position of the conveyor belt axis. This is referred to as the recorded position. The other position is called the initial object position. This is the vector offset of the object origin relative to the conveyor belt origin. In some applications, the object may be guaranteed to be in the exact same position and orientation on the belt every time. In that case, the initial object position is a fixed value. And a simple sensor is sufficient to detect the object and record the position of the conveyor belt. But in this application, it's clear that the object orientation on the belt could be different every time. So we use a vision system to both detect the initial object position and capture the position of the belt all at the same time. In these demos, the vision system is able to detect the initial object position vector with X, Y, and RZ components. This is simply an offset from the origin of the vision system, which is calibrated to align with the conveyor belt origin. Once you have the new initial object position and recorded position, you execute MC track conveyor belt. Then wait for the in sync status and command the sequence of PCS moves. In this case, it is a PCS move down to the object, wait, and another PCS move back above the object. 
when the PCS move sequence is complete, you can cancel tracking at any time with an MCS move or by activating a PCS user frame. Tracking can be resumed by executing the block again with the same initial object position and recorded position. However, this program waits for a new object and a new tracking operation begins. For more technical details regarding conveyor tracking, please watch the recorded webinars, Intro to Conveyor Tracking, and Practical Application of Conveyor Tracking with MotionWorks IEC. You can get hands-on experience with these training demos by enrolling in the Advanced Programming Workshop. And check out our Quick Reference Guide if you'll be programming a conveyor tracking application. Thanks for watching this video and go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of MotionWorks IEC 3.